arguments against minimum wage. Minimum wage is not only unnecessary, but harmful for the economy and the very people who minimum wage laws are targeted towards. Workers who make low wages. First of all, before we can understand minimum wage, what is a wage? A wage is the money that is paid by an individual or corporation for certain work or services provided. By this definition, a wage is a price. A person's labor has value attached to it, similarly to a good or service. This means that the same economic laws that determine the price of goods and services can be also and are also attributed to wages. This is very important to remember it later, so remember it. Now that we know what a wage is, what is a minimum wage? A minimum wage is the lowest payment that employers can legally pay their employees in an official job. Minimum wage is effectively a form of price control, but instead of being directed towards physical goods or services, it is directed towards the labor that an individual provides for another. Minimum wage, therefore, outlaws the payment of an individual below the minimum amount if they are working at a legally authorized corporation. Before even getting into the economic consequences of minimum wage, you can already oppose it on the basis of property rights. If two individuals agree to a contract in which one pays another a specific amount for doing a specific action and for a specific period of time, this is totally within their rights to do, to do so. It is a voluntary transaction carried out by two consenting individuals above the age of 18 and thus should be allowed without interference from another party. This is based on the right to self-ownership, that an individual is free to act and pursue their self-interest as, as, as long as this does not require the violation of these rights themselves. Minimum wage bans some of these transactions in regards to labor and payment, as if an individual's labor isn't valuable, valuable enough to justify paying them the minimum payment the minimum legal payment, it is not an incentive for the initiator of the exchange, the one who offers their money, to start it. Thus, with minimum wage in, in place, some mutually beneficial transactions will be outlawed and certain individuals will miss out on the chance of receiving more value than what they started with. Now, let's move on to the economic consequences of minimum wage laws. Minimum wage being a form of price control has similar consequences to other forms of price controls, except it is, regards, is, it is with regards to labor and jobs rather than physical goods or other such products. The first and by far the most damaging consequences created by minimum wage is the increase of unemployment. As stated previously, labor has a certain value attached to it, and thus the wage paid to someone is, the, is a price for a specific action done by that individual. Wages, the price of labor, therefore, are determined by supply and demand, just as goods, goods and services are. With no price controls, or in this case, minimum wage laws, the price of someone's labor will be determined by supply and demand. Supply being the number of people who are willing to and can perform a specific job, and the demand is how many people, is how many people any given company or firm is willing to hire at a given time. Demand for labor increases if the demand for a company's output, which are the goods or services the company produces, increases. On the contrary, demand for labor decreases if the company's output also decreases. If the price of anything, including a person's labor, goes up, the demand for it will be reduced. Minimum wage artificially increases the price of labor, Therefore, employers hire less people due to artificially propped up increased prices for the same work. For example, if a person generates less than $15 per hour of revenue for a business, then paying them $15 per hour will increase the costs and expenses, which can cause the business to be running a deficit due to the increased cost of the wages. The only way to no longer run a deficit is to increase the price of the product so that the business can possibly generate more revenue or cut costs and expenses. The first option actually may be counterproductive, as increasing the price past the market equilibrium won't actually generate more revenue. This is because 
the demand for your product will fall, as people will value it less at the increased price you are selling it at, relative to other similar products in the market. Due to reduced demand, fewer people would purchase the product, and despite the higher price you are selling it at, the business would generate less revenue. The second option is to cut costs, and this is the only practical way to generate a profit or at least break even after minimum wage laws are introduced. This requires the business owner to fire all non-essential or less valuable workers and keep only the best or most valuable. The workers which will be kept benefit at the expense of the ones who now make zero dollars and are unemployed. Another possible way for a business to cut costs is to make all employees work part-time. This means that the employees work less while receiving the higher legal wage per hour. In addition, part-time workers don't receive any of the benefits that regular workers do, such as health insurance or paid vacation time, which further reduces expenses. The workers do not get any more after the minimum wage laws are introduced. Instead, they get the same amount of wealth from wages with no benefits. As an example on the effect that minimum wage has on unemployment, states with a minimum wage of $7.25, the national average, had a 6.4% unemployment rate, and states with a minimum wage above that had a 7.4% unemployment, a 14% difference in favor of the states with lower minimum wages. In addition, job growth was slower with states having a minimum wage higher than $7.25 which is 0.5%, then with states having a minimum wage of $7.25 with 0.8% job growth. A staggering 46% difference, once again, in favor of states with lower minimum wages. The average teen unemployment was 25 was 20.5% with states with a minimum wage of $7.25 and 22.5% in states having a minimum wage higher than $7.25 with tw with a difference of around 9% once again in favor of states with lower minimum wages. Finally, for teen job growth, the states with a minimum wage of $7.25 had a job growth of for teens of 1.8%, whereas states with a minimum wage higher than that actually had a reduction of teen jobs of around 0.5% reduction in teen jobs. For every $1 increase in minimum wage, there is a 1.4% increase in total unemployment and a 4.67% increase in teen unemployment. In terms of job growth, a $1 increase in minimum wage leads to a decrease of 0.2% net job growth and, to, and in terms of teen job growth, a decrease of 4% net teen job growth. Now it is clear that minimum wage reduces employment for the low paid workers who need a job the most, even if they are not paid as well as others. Another economic consequence caused by the minimum wage is the increase in prices. When people work to create value and wealth for the society, it drives prices lower and increases the purchasing power of the individual, which improves living standards. Of course, unemployment on its own does not tell the whole story. People have to be employed in jobs that actively generate wealth for the society, such as assisting in the mass production of a newly designed and cheaper product. Economic growth is fundamentally caused by the increase of real wealth gained through deferred consumption or savings and increases in worker productivity and efficiency. However, having the increase in unemployment caused by minimum wage reduces the amount of indi individuals employed in jobs that generate wealth. Unemployment leads to less production. Less production leads to less supply. Less supply leads to higher prices. Prices are also increased not just due to low, less supply caused by the lack of a productive workforce, but also because of the incurred costs that businesses take and thus increase prices to pay off their expenses. For example, a 10% increase in minimum wage increases prices by food prices by 4% and overall prices by 0.4%. Another study found that increasing the minimum wage from $7.25 to $15 per hour increased the price of McDonald's products by an average of 38%. In addition, child care costs would increase by 21% and up to 43% in some states. 
if prices have increased and wages in have increased for those who are obviously still employed, it doesn't mean the individual actually has any more purchasing power. It just means the per the person makes proportionally higher wages, which they proportionally spend more money on on goods and services. Purchasing power can only be increased through the production through the increased production of goods and services, which makes them less scarce and thus have a lower cost. Increased efficiency of worker production and saving money to consume later, also called deferred consumption. It cannot be increased via the decision of politicians or unelected bureaucrats. The final problem with minimum wage is that it doesn't allow teens and young adults to gain sufficient experience. Many of these quote-unquote minimum wage jobs are not intended for people to feed their families on. They are mostly intended as entry-level jobs so that teens and young adults can gain sufficient experience to get a better and more paid job later in their life and also produce and assist in the creation and transportation of goods and services such as food as an example. Jobs such as pizza delivery, fast food workers, and delivering the mail are all very simple and easy jobs. Almost anyone has the qualifications to do them. The reason why wages are so low for these jobs is due to the very high supply of, of people, meaning that many people have the capabilities to do these jobs, and thus these jobs are not valuable to most employers to, to justify a higher wage. Not all jobs are supposed to have a quote-unquote livable wage. Some labor simply doesn't produce as much value or wealth for most people as other forms of labor. Minimum wage prices these employment opportunities out of the reach of teenagers, and thus they can get the experience and skills they need to find a better job in the future. This leaves many people in adulthood without any job experience and working at the aforementioned jobs, wondering why they, be, why they are being paid such a low amount. Overall, these are my argue, are my the overall these are my arguments against minimum wage laws. The government should not have the authority to decide how much employers can pay their employees. Minimum wage increases unemployment and makes it harder to find a job among the working poor. Minimum wage decreases job growth and makes it harder to open new businesses and maintain old ones due to the artificially increased cost attributed to labor which creates less valuable and is common to find. Minimum wage increases prices, especially for food and childcare, specifically for the people who have a low income. Minimum wage prevents or severely limits the amount of teenagers and young adults who can gain skills and experience early on, which prevents them from getting a better job due to a lack of skills, experience, and qualifications. Minimum wage laws, ironically, hurt the very group they claim to protect, the working poor. Despite these useful idiot leftists ranting about the unfairness of society and that the government should do more to help, this should not happen. Government intervention never provides a solution to an existing problem. It's that it only creates more problems on top of that very problem. Don't trust politicians who know absolutely nothing about the economy to regulate it and set wage and price controls. Government only intervenes to benefit the people running and working for it at the expense of the citizens they control, manipulate, and steal from. And despite their lies, they will never, never help the people outside of the government institution. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye, and enjoy the rest of your day.